Lucy weakly opened her eyes and she surveyed the surrounding. Nothing looked familiar. The last thing she remembered was that she had a safe delivery. She saw the happy tears of the couple as they carried their baby. She had then drifted to sleep. So how come I'm here in this near empty room? Then she noticed that her hands and legs had been tied to the chair she was sitting on. Fear gripped her. What is happening? Where am I? You are exactly where I want you to be. Mrs. Samson? I just delivered your baby. Why am I tied up? Did you do this? You are really deaf to still be asking me that. Why did you tie me up? Because I intend to strangle you to death. You were the one the soothsayer was talking about. She thought to herself. I. Why. What. Why. Why do I want to kill you? Well, the simple and short answer is envy. Envy? You are envious of. Me? Correct. <laughs> you were born with a silver spoon, you are beautiful, your husband is wealthy, and you literally have everything. Why on earth will you be envious of someone like me? You have one thing I can never have, and that is the ability to carry a baby. Do you know how much I desire to carry my own baby in my womb? My greatest dream is to be pregnant. Yet you came into the picture and ruined it all. How? I'm confused. I wanted to carry my own baby. I got pregnant and I almost died because of it. I eventually lost it, and because of that my husband made me promise to use surrogacy. I didn't want to, I wanted to keep trying to get pregnant and carry my own baby, even if it cost my life. Each time we visited you during your pregnancy, his joy would overflow as he felt the baby kick in your womb. I watched in bitterness and anger, because I wanted it to be me. <coughs> he was obsessed with you and the baby, he stared at the picture of your baby bump every blessed day. He called day and night, checking on you, he completely neglected me all because you carried his baby and not me. Your baby, not mine. The womb may be mine, but the baby is yours all yours. It doesn't matter, I want to end it all. My husband is planning for you to carry our second child. I am having none of it. I would not stand another tortuous neglect from him because of you. I told him I didn't want another child, but he has been insisting all because of you. He will get another surrogate mother. That's where you are wrong. You came highly recommended. We tried six surrogate mothers. Six. Each one failed until you. My husband is convinced that you are the best one for us. You see why I have to get rid of you. He wants a large family, and he won't back down until he gets it. I cannot endure the torture of him neglecting me for you, anymore. The earlier I get rid of you the better, I am dying of envy that you can effortlessly carry several children to turn, whilst I cannot even carry my own baby to turn. It's not fair. Mrs. Samson don't do this to me, this is not the way out. Mrs. Samson was obviously done talking because she swiftly wrapped the rope round Lucy's neck from behind, strangling her. With her hands tied Lucy was unable to fight back. She struggled all the same, but it was futile as she watched her life slipping off. The amulet was still on her neck but it was clearly powerless to stop what was happening. At the last minute, as the last breath was about to leave her, she oddly remembered Richard's words Jesus saves, Lucy, give your life to him. Jesus if indeed you can save just as Richard had said, I beg you, please save me. I promise to accept you. Don't let me die please, save me. She believed her prayer for help must have fallen on deaf ears, because death eventually reached for her. Lucy wake up. Lucy roused and opened her eyes, it felt like she had been sleeping for a very long time, she looked around. A man in a casual wear was peering at her. Her eyes darted round, she was still in the room, but Mrs. Samson was not there and her hands and legs were untied. Am I dead? Not anymore. How? Get up, let's leave this place. She wanted to ask a lot of questions, 
but the man didn't leave room for that. She followed his lead out of the room, and was completely shocked to realize that they had arrived at the entrance of her house. She didn't understand how they got here, or how they passed the gate. Everywhere was dark, and she couldn't tell if it was late at night or very early in the morning. Go inside pack your things, and relocate, Richard will help you. Richard is away on a trip. I hastened him to return, and instructed him to wait for you in your house. Pack what you can and do what he says. The man instructed her, and turned to leave. Wait, who are you? The one whom Richard has been speaking of, the one whom you called on to save you from death. Ja. Jesus? At the mention of that name, she felt her heart pound heavily, and then he was gone. His warning rang in her head, and she hurriedly went in, Richard was waiting for in her living room. Lucy you're here at last. Thank you, Jesus. I got in using with the spare key you gave me. Pack what you can, we need to leave immediately. Lucy nodded, and they hurriedly got her things into Richard's car and he drove out of the compound. She filled him in on everything that had happened, as they drove to the airport. I've arranged for someone to pick you up at the airport immediately you land over there. I will make sure Mrs. Samson is apprehended. I promise, and then I will bring you back. Thank you. Please tell me about Jesus, and how I can accept him. Richard gladly spent the rest of the little time they had together, leading Lucy as she surrendered her life to Jesus. I love this Christian cartoon. I told you, you are going to love it. Aunt Lucy <laughs> Promise you won't go anywhere again. Promise you will live with us, and not go anywhere again. <laughs> Lucy laughed loudly, and she hugged them tighter. The one year away from them had made her miss them terribly. They were going to be the spitting image of their late mother. That's such a huge promise, I have to pray about it. <laughs> okay, you can pray about it. Daddy said it's okay to ask God about the little stuffs like that. But you have to tell us what God said, okay? Sure. I didn't think it would be possible to apprehend Mrs. Samson. It wasn't easy, but her husband surprisingly cooperated, especially when he initially thought you were dead. Thanks to him, the detective was able to get a confession out of her. She is paying for her actions now. Thank you so much for everything. I used to love surrogacy, but I almost died because of it. Yes, true. The bad shouldn't make you forget the good. The good? I have two precious gifts courtesy of surrogacy. Plus, without surrogacy how would I have met this special and amazing surrogate mother whom I'm dying to have as my wife? Do you have an answer for me now? They had been meeting occasionally. When she was in hiding, she had wanted to scream to the rooftop when Richard asked her to be his wife, a month ago. She told him she'd pray about it, and even though she had gotten her answer weeks ago, she wanted everything to be resolved before giving him her answer. You know, surrogacy afforded me the opportunity of meeting a great man like you, and I would be honored to spend the rest of my life with you. Richard screamed for joy loud enough for the eavesdropping twins to hear. <laughs> Yes. She said yes. Brothers and sister, that's all for this video. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10:13. Credit to pen and paper. Gloria ti poju. Brothers and sisters, that's all for this video. If you liked this video, feel free to like it, comment and share with people around you. And don't forget to subscribe to Hope and Dominion Christian Animation Channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. God bless and remember, Jesus loves you.